Hey everyone, today I thought I would go in on a little bit of YouTuber story time type thing because I recently found myself telling an old childhood story to my wife and it was making her crack up a little bit. So now I'm gonna try to make everybody else laugh see how that goes but it's still tech related don't worry it's not that out of the realm of what you're used to it all comes down to the first apple product i ever bought myself and it's a bit of a interesting story because you know i turned into the internet's definition of apple sheep so it's kind of insightful for all of you to know exactly where it all began and it all started i believe when i was 10 years old or nine it could be either of those when i first was a member of the pewdiepie army right so basically my parents had had ipod before and they were kind of like family iPods that they mostly were used by my mom and occasionally my dad but because it was technology and I thought it was interesting I would try to get my hands on the iPod whenever I could. Fun fact before the days I owned an Apple product I didn't actually know how the click wheel worked. When I was very very young I used to just stroke my finger on the click wheel up and down and wait until the highlighted menu would select the thing I wanted. Oftentimes it didn't work but I just never grasped the concept of making the click wheel circular so I would just kind of mess with it until it did what I want. I was very dumb but obviously later on in life I figured it out and one day my mom purchased the iPod Nano third generation. This was the squarish kind. It was in green and I thought that was one of the coolest things I'd ever seen with its mirror finish back and that display which had color because the first iPod my parents had did not have color. It was just e-ink. Very very old iPod one of the originals and as soon as I saw my mom using the 3G and how she was using that click wheel and it even had games built into it, I would try to ask if I could use it whenever I could within the realm of reasonability. I wasn't one of those kids that was extremely addicted to tech, just a little bit, just a small addiction. So as soon as I'd been using it for a while and I'd seen my mom use it for a while, I was like, mom, how much are one of those things? I want to buy one. When I was young, I would mow lawns around town and I would do yard work for my grandma and that used to be how I would make money. Or sometimes I would get a little bit of cash for my birthday or during Christmas time. So I had saved up some money and I was like, hmm, I, I need one of those things. Mom, can I buy an iPod Nano? And because my parents were responsible, they did not allow me to just buy anything I wanted as long as it was my money. Even if I had the money to pay for something, that did not give me permission to buy that product. And when you don't have a debit card of your own, yeah, that's kind of difficult to do. Anything you want to buy, basically, you have to hand your cash to your parents and ask them to buy it. And that's what they do. But at this very, very young age, I asked if I could buy the iPod Nano and my mom responded with, well, maybe if you're very, very good and you get straight A's and you do well in school, you can buy one for Christmas. So as soon as she gave that potential in my head, and I'm sure there's more details, like she probably had to talk to my dad about it first, I was set. I was like, okay, next gen iPod Nano. I'm totally getting that as soon as it comes out. So I was pumped. I was really looking forward to that Christmas. And at the time she told me this, it was like June by by the way. So it's not like it was very early. I still had to wait a while, but I didn't quite have all the money saved up, but I realized you could get like higher storage configurations and that kind of thing. So I was just like, anytime I can get money, I'm going to save it for this. And right before holidays came around, Apple unveiled the fourth generation iPod. And my God, my mind was blown. The fact that it wasn't a square and now it was this taller aspect ratio, but it was getting a lot more features at the same time. I was really pumped for that. And I thought the new generation iPod looked even cooler than the third gen. So I was like, well, okay, now I'm even more sold. I watched the event where they unveiled it and everything, and this is where I first started kind of getting into Apple products. So about a month before Christmas, about the end of November, my grades had been good, but before they would purchase it, they did apply some rules. They were like, hey, look, if it's family time and we're all chatting or we're at the dinner table, you're not allowed to use that thing. You can't bring that iPod along with you and use it as an escape device. And of course, I wanted it so bad, I agreed to anything else. Like, okay, okay, yeah, 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 I won't, I won't, I, I'll, I'll never use it unless I'm alone and in my room, which was tricky because when I was young, I didn't have a door on my room. It was kind of like the media room and my bedroom. So anytime someone came in, I would always have to put the iPod away and be like, hi, other family member, how are you? I want to know more about your day. Obviously exaggerating a little bit, but a month before my parents said, okay, you've been good. Let's go to Walmart. So we went to the Walmart and I handed my mom the cash for the iPod. She asked which color I wanted. Of course, I wanted silver. I thought that was the best looking one. So we got the silver fourth generation.
generation iPod Nano from Walmart, but I still could not use it or even unbox it until Christmas Day. So even though I was there when she bought it, wrapped it up, put it under the Christmas tree, and I just had to wait very patiently. Sometimes in the mornings, I would go up to the present and just hold it, knowing that the iPod was in there and that I had bought it. But of course, to abide by the rules of the family, I did not open it until Christmas Day. But my goodness, I gotta say, that was an incredibly exciting Christmas because I had been saving for so many months for that iPod. I'd always wanted one of my own. Finally, to get one and plug it into the computer, start syncing with iTunes and everything. And that's where my love of Apple products originally began. That was the first Apple product I ever bought and started using. The sad part of this story is I do not have that iPod Nano anymore. I believe I gave it to one of my sisters or I let a friend borrow it once and I never got it back. So I have no idea where it is today. For all I know, it could be destroyed. It could be in a dump somewhere or some kid I don't even know is probably using it or has it in a drawer. I gave it away, obviously, later in life when I had an iPod Touch or an iPhone and I didn't need the Nano anymore, but I do still have some iPods in the collection. I've talked about them in earlier vlogs before. This one's pretty close. It's actually not a fourth generation. This was my wife's old iPod Nano fifth generation. This one actually had a camera, so we still have this one and its original packaging, which is kind of cool, but it basically gives you an idea of what that kind of iPod was like. I also still have a iPod Nano third generation. This was actually my sister's, which she let me add to my collection because she didn't want it anymore, but to give you an idea that had that kind of metal back. This was an eight gigabyte nano, very chrome. My mom's was green, but man, it was impressive that all that time ago, they were able to make these things so light and thin, but I guess they really didn't need to do much. You know, they basically store movies and pictures and videos, and that's about it. That's all they do. This was my other sister's iPod Nano fifth gen. You can see the camera on the back. It's in yellow, and it even has a dent, which you can kind of see a little bit, but it still works. What's funny about the camera, though, is it only did video mode. It had no photography capable skills. And of course, the videos were about 240p at maximum. But hey, for an iPod Nano, it was kind of impressive at the time. Much later in life, I actually bought this. This is an iPod Nano 6th generation, which took a very different direction. And I had an iPhone 5 at the time I bought this. I got this used on Amazon for like $90. And I basically used it as a watch before the Apple Watch even existed. It had a little clip on the back so you could clip it onto clothes and stuff. But I had an accessory that turned it into a watch. And it had a clock app with different watch faces you can cycle through. Now, there was no raise to wake, no tap to wake. So every time you wanted to check what time it is, you had to click the power button, which was not ideal. But I did that for a solid, like, year. I mean... The only reason it doesn't turn on anymore is because one time I was on a hiking trip and I wanted to go in the water for a little bit near a river and this thing is the opposite of water resistance. So as soon as this thing got in the water, uh, it died and never turned back on, which is kind of sad. But uh, it did store my music. It still took a 30 pin connector and had a headphone jack despite it being so tiny um, and very, very light. And this is the last iPod Nano I ever bought. Luckily, I still have it. Anyway, I guess that concludes story time. Thank you guys for watching and I will chat with you all later. Bye-bye.